And we are shifting to our last speaker of this session, Dr. Jill Blander from Inside Tracker, the CSO. The floor is yours. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Can you hear me? Cool. So first, it's a, a pleasure to see some old friends from my time at uh, MIT 20 years ago and uh, a lot of uh, new friends from the last couple of years, so it's really exciting. And uh, thank you so much for the organizer for arranging this amazing uh, conference. In my opinion, it's the best in the field. Um, speaking of, of which, uh, a couple of years ago, I started a, a podcast called Longevity by Design and we interviewed around the 45 leaders in the longevity field. Uh, you can see some of them from uh, Nir Barzilai on the left uh, to Dr. Andrew Huberman in the bottom right, and a lot of you in between. And it's uh, really exciting for me to interview all of you and uh, to expose all the wealth of knowledge that uh, we have in this uh, auditorium to everyone in the world. So thank you so much for that. And everyone that is interested is more than, than welcome to listen to uh, those interviews. So uh, we heard a lot today about health span and lifespan, and I'm sure that I'm not uh, giving you any uh, news that uh, uh, if you look at the US, uh, the lifespan is around 79 years, the health span is around 30, 63 years, and uh, around 16 uh, years of our life most likely will spend on the bed uh, connecting to a lot of tubes and uh, basically not enjoying our life. Uh, and that's basically what we are trying to do at Insight Tracker. We are trying to narrow this gap as much as we can and allow everyone to live uh, better longer. So how do we do that? Uh, we are uh, uh, combining data from blood biomarkers, DNA, physiological markers, user-generated user health data, and we are adding more and more inputs. All of that go into a dual AI uh, engine that includes expert system and uh, machine learning that uh, spit out to the user a very personal recommendation from him or her uh, that allow them to optimize their health and holistically uh, live uh, better longer. Um, a bit about the company, we have more than 100 amazing employees and uh, uh, coming for me as a scientist that uh, uh, have been in the academia and moving to the industry, it's not easy to build a company, it's not easy to build a team and we really have an amazing team, uh, uh, most of them are located in Boston. Uh, we have around 100,000 users as of today, we are going uh, uh, pretty rapidly. Um, and the unique value proposition of the company is that we have more than 14 years of uh, R&D science on a, a proprietary AI engine and algorithm. So uh, in the time of the company, I've seen a lot of uh, new companies coming and going and all of that, and we are here for the long run, and we'll stay like that, and we committed to help humans to live uh, better longer. Uh, we have the first product that combined blood, DNA, fitness tracker, self-reported data, and we are adding more and more. In a few months, we'll add a, a food recognition and will allow people also to try to understand what's happening, what macro and micronutrient you consume too much or too little, and so on. I don't have time today to discuss it, uh, but uh, I will be more than happy to discuss with everyone later if you want. Uh, what is uh, nice about that, that we extract around five very personalized recommendations for each user out of a battery of thousands of recommendations. So basically you receive the best recommendation that you can based on all the information that you know about it, about you, sorry. And uh, uh, we believe that we are leading the health span optimization market. Uh, we also have an amazing uh, scientific advisory board. I'm sure that all of you know David Sinclair and Lenny Garente. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, you know the other uh, amazing uh, scientific advisory board that we have. And I just want to say that uh, a few weeks ago, an uh, investor came to us and I started with this slide and I showed them the slide and uh, we spoke about it for half an hour because he asked me, are you really uh, uh, serious that you spend time with each of them? And, uh, and I said, yeah, yeah, and I, I explained it. So those people not only uh, are a window dressing, but we're spending a lot of time with them and they are helping us to uh, build the best company in the world in the health span optimization. Um, so now I would like to show you a quick video. Hopefully it will work. Um, that explain what is the Insight Tracker app. The Insight Tracker app provides a convenient and intuitive. Sorry, it's not showing. It's not. The Insight Tracker app provides a convenient and intuitive dashboard. Why is it not showing? 
let's go out. Sorry about that. Okay. I'll take care of it. The Insight Tracker app provides a convenient and intuitive dashboard for everything you need to optimize your health. Once your blood results are ready, your personalized analysis will reveal where your health is optimized and where it's not. Each biomarker tab includes a breakdown, explaining what each measurement means for your health. Adding DNA results takes your analysis even deeper by revealing how your genetic predispositions are contributing to your blood biomarker levels. Once you select a wellness goal, Inside Tracker's algorithm will generate a customizable action plan with specific nutrition, fitness, supplement, and lifestyle recommendations. Explore each recommendation to learn how to improve your biomarker levels and achieve your wellness goal. Easily toggle recommendations on or off to focus on the actions that will make the biggest impact on your health and longevity. Check in each day to track your progress. You can also customize your notification settings to help you stay on track. Integrate your fitness tracker for real-time feedback and pro tips, like how you can best recover from a workout. Retest your blood biomarker levels every three to six months to track your progress over time and identify what to work on next. Discover the science of your health. Inside Tracker. Start inside. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, so now when we understood how Instant Tracker is uh, working, I would like to uh, go and slice and dice a bit the data that we have from our users. So in 2018, we published a paper in the journal Scientific Reports, and you can see one uh, slide from that, uh, that we looked at uh, around 1,000 uh, subjects and looked at a uh, baseline versus follow-up, and we found that uh, there is a, a very nice improvement in a lot of blood biomarkers from baseline to follow-up. Again, because it's a published paper, I won't spend time on it. Um, now we are uh, five years later, and uh, our platform has around 100,000 users uh, that include blood, DNA, and uh, data from fitness tracker. So let's explore the valuable insight uh, hidden within. And the first uh, approach that we uh, uh, took is basically uh, doing some uh, clustering analysis. We cluster the population to 15 different clusters, and you can see it in the top panels. And then, uh, uh, as an uh, example, we dye the population based on uh, diabetes. And you can see that uh, we found that in cluster 13, in a, a sub a part of cluster 13, we have a, a strong concentration of diabetic population. Uh, but you can also see that there is uh, some concentration a bit lower for a pre-diabetic population. Um, but we also have there some uh, uh, patient or users that are not diabetic at all. So that might imply that maybe those that look okay right now might be in the way to become diabetic. And we are looking into that. Another example of the cluster analysis, if you look now on this slide on HSCRP level, from zero, which is blue, to 10, which is really yellow, you can see suddenly two different uh, clusters of uh, HSCRP. So when we uh, drill down into that, we found that uh, actually the cluster one, which is on the left, is more like a, a acute inflammation that uh, related to exercise, while the other cluster is a, a subpopulation that have a, a high uh, issue with metabolic-related diseases, and most likely they are a, a sick. So again, it's explained why it's important to look holistically on the population, and the high HSCRP is not always bad, sometimes it's good, and uh, looking holistically uh, makes a lot of sense in that uh, 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 domain. I just want to mention that uh, uh, Rene, our VP of Science and AI, is here, and her team done all this analysis, amazing analysis that I'm showing to you today. I hope that you will have time because we have a lot of slides, and so I will try to go fast. A another uh, uh, thing that we have done, again, we have a lot of uh, uh, users, is start looking at trends. So we identified three different trends, one that we call inflection point, one that uh, basically increases or, or decreases with age, and another one that is uh, steady. And a couple of examples of uh, inflection point are uh, LDL cholesterol or uh, ferritin for male, and we can see that uh, at certain age they, they, are, they are going up, and at certain age they are starting to decline, and we are trying to understand why is it. 
Uh, here you can see an example of a, a, a subject and a testing a, in the last decade plus. So you can see some data and you can see how a, a specific a, a, a user a, optimizes the blood biomarkers. But it's more interestingly to look at the whole population together. So an al analysis that we ran a, a few weeks ago showed that uh, almost 80% of our users optimized at least one suboptimal biomarker up upon retest. And we can see at least two different kinds of biomarkers, some that are easily uh, to optimize. Uh, vitamin D is a very good example. And you can see that 52% uh, uh, of uh, the users that started with vitamin D be below the optimal uh, zone uh, optimize the vitamin D, while when you look at the uh, uh, total cholesterol, you see that only around 20% optimize their uh, total cholesterol. Um, this is an amazing result that Rene showed me uh, I know, a few weeks ago and I said, no way, but uh, <laughs> we repeat it again. And here we are looking at a subpopulation that, uh, that started as a diabetic. So basically their A1C is above 6.5 and you can see that we have around uh, 600 of those. And then we follow them up uh, for the second test and the third test. And you can see the p-value above. And what we uh, uh, found that uh, uh, following the uh, insult tracker recommendation allowed them to decrease significantly, statistically significantly, but I think that even medically significantly from the first to the second and from the second to the third. So uh, I think that it's a, a very nice indication that uh, hopefully the platform is working. Um, as I described before, we are not only looking at blood. We're looking at blood, DNA, and fitness tracker. So let's play a bit with that and try to see how blood and the data from fitness tracker interact. So you can see here uh, on the left side a, a correlation analysis of all the blood biomarker with all the uh, physiological biomarker that we have. And we uh, uh, very easily notice that actually VO2 max is correlated and statistically correlated. The, the, the star there showing that is statistically correlated with a lot of uh, blood biomarkers. And you can see it on the right side. And uh, just to summarize, uh, higher VO2 max positively correlated with higher HDL, testosterone, blood iron related markers, and negatively correlated with upper B cholesterol, LDL, triglyceride, fasting glucose, A1C, HSCRP and white blood cells, which is, which is amazing. It looks like, uh, at least in our hand, HSCRP is, uh, sorry, a VO2 max is a really a master a biomarker of L-SPAN. What we done next, and again, it's Rene and uh, one of uh, the scientists in the team, her name is Nimisha, is uh, they try to see what happened if we look at our subpopulation and look at a uh, subpopulation that uh, improved their VO2 max from baseline to follow up, what happened, uh, how are they optimizing other markers? And you can see it in this uh, table, and if we look at the HSCRP, for example, the subpopulation that uh, raised the VO2 max, 88% for them, improved the HSCRP, while the subpopulation that haven't raised their VO2 max, only 47% increased the HSCRP. And you can see similar result for triglyceride, LDL, cortisol, and glucose, which is a, a really interesting result that suggests that uh, indeed VO2 max is, a, a, again, a master regulator of uh, L-SPAN. Uh, sleep is uh, 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 something very interesting, and we started the day today, I think, with a, a question about uh, jet lag and all of that. So we said, let's, let's start, try to look at sleep, but uh, let's divide uh, our sleep time between uh, uh, two, four uh, buckets or four groups. So the subpopulation that sleep less than five hours, five to seven hours, optimal seven to nine hours, and above nine hours. And here you can see an example of how the VO2 max look like if you divide it by sleep. And you can see that uh, very uh, significantly, people that sleep between five to se uh, sorry, seven to nine hours, their VO2 max is uh, significantly higher than the other subpopulation, at least in our uh, data set. We also looked at a few blood biomarkers, and you can see a similar result for triglyceride, LDL cholesterol, and HDL cholesterol, both of them going in the right direction. Um, so again, uh, don't underestimate your sleep. Um, again, we discussed the intersection between blood and the physiological markers. Let's look now between uh, blood and the DNA and PGS score. So uh, another uh, gifted scientist in our team, uh, 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 Bartek and Paul develop uh, around 80 PGS scores. Here you can see an example of the PGS score related to APOB. And you can see that uh, this PGS score include around 17,000 uh, single nucleotide polymorphism. 
And uh, what you see on the graph is on the x-axis, you can see the risk score from 0% to 100% divided to 10 groups. And on the left, uh, uh, on, on the y-axis, you can see the upper B blood levels. And you can see a very nice correlation between lower uh, PGS score and lower upper B level versus higher uh, risk score and higher upper B risk level. Um, and that suggests that if a, a, a patient come to one of your uh, longevity clinic and have a very high risk score for upper B, maybe the best uh, intervention is statin, while uh, if you have a very low risk score and you have still high upper B, maybe lifestyle is the right intervention. Um, here you can see, a, 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 again, correlation matrix of all the PGS score with all the uh, blood biomarkers, and the, I, I decided to pick up one of them, which is uh, the correlation between the, the negative correlation between the longevity score, DNA score, and the A1C. So basically, someone that has a, a, a better longevity score, uh, most likely, in, at least in our data set, have a lower A1C. Um, we, we heard a lot about clocks today, and we decided to focus on a, a clock that is based on the blood biomarkers. Uh, the reason for that is it's an open, uh, open box. I don't like a black box. I don't understand why uh, someone have a higher uh, uh, epigenetic score or not. I, I know that it's great for scientists, but uh, I'm not sure that it's uh, very clear for end user or a patient or users. So uh, we develop a... a uh, what we call inner edge, which is a biological clock that uh, based on the blood. We show in the middle panel, you can see how each blood biomarker contributes to your age. We show you the graph and we show you, then we provide you an in, uh, intervention. How can you uh, improve this specific blood biomarker and hopefully improve your inner edge? Um, here is the graph that shows the distribution of our users uh, with this inner edge. And in this uh, uh, graph, you can see the distribution of uh, the inner age from a subpopulation that started with inner age that is higher than chronological age from a first row to the second row. And you can see that significant amount of our users improved their inner age from baseline to follow-up. Um, I, I would just like to take a couple of minutes about a, a longevity clinic. So we are in the process of developing what we call longevity clinic in a box. Uh, and the vision for that is to uh, enable physician-led longevity centers to empower their patient with a science-based personalized action plan to live healthier longer. The uh, proposed uh, workflow is the following. At home, the user can use something like the InstaTracker app and the log is uh, uh, information based on questionnaire. We can send them to uh, take blood from Quest Diagnostic, uh, DNA, uh, and other information. Uh, then the clinician can sit with the uh, one minute. The clinician can sit with the patient and uh, perform an active listening. Because today, I'm sure that all of you, when you go to your clinician, is uh, typing on the computer. When all the information is in, the clinician can sit with the patient and basically uh, discuss and understand the needs. Uh, then they consult with the clinician, and the, uh, and then uh, the user can again use the uh, app to leverage uh, uh, our mobile app capabilities that I showed you before, uh, to guidance, insight, and change behavior. Um, here is the a vision for the a clinician to uh, select the information or select the intervention. So as I said before, InstaTracker provides a very scientific uh, recommendation and very accurate for nutrition, supplement, lifestyle, and exercise. So the clinician can come and toggle in and out and then show to the patient or the follower exactly what intervention he would like to select. On top of that, he can add a, a, some drug if you want to. And all of that will go to the patient and he will receive the intervention. I will skip this slide due to lack of time and I'm looking forward to speaking with all of you this week. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jill. Thank you so much. Uh, one question. Oh, okay. Maybe two quick questions before the break. Hi. So I'm a user, and I love the interface. I'm curious. Right now, you're at 100,000. What's your vision to get to 100 million? Because I'm my, no. My vision is to get to 8 billion. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm still struck by the logistical challenges of of moving blood around. It is, it's, it's, indeed, it's not easy. But we figure it out. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. I, I just wonder, you said you have five suggestions. 
now before the clinic. I'm assuming that one of them is called your doctor, right? If you have yeah, absolutely. high glucose. Absolutely. High glucose. Absolutely. So everyone that is out of the normal, every blood biomarker that out is of the normal, we are uh, sending a notification to the user, go to your physician and consult with them. Yeah. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. For the great presentation and you are sitting on a gold mine of data from your DNA and blood to your habits and even health trackers. But just sitting with the data won't actually change your health unless you know what to do about it. Enter Inside Tracker. And so that includes setting up your blood work in labs, analyzing the actual results, and then empowering you with a solution-based plan that's data-driven and unique to you.